Sick Harrison Price from the Historic Wall Center. Our pleasure to welcome back to the program the owner of the British Columbia Alliance, Mr. Amar Doman. Amar, how are we doing? Hey, not so bad. Not so bad. Thanks for having me on. More than welcome. Um, I know they're, well, three years in owning the team. And by the way, happy anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I know there was a six-game losing streak towards the end of the 2021 season. That was an abbreviated season you took over mid Mid year, uh, this is otherwise the longest losing streak of your tenure. How are you holding up here, Amar? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think um, it's one of those things. It's hard, tough to put your finger on what's going on, and I know that uh, Coach Campbell and, and the team has got uh, you know a, a strong focus on getting the train back on the track. So yeah, it's tough to digest for sure. Um, I just feel fortunate that the Western standings are where they are. Um, thank goodness. And, you know, that's not a crutch, but certainly um, it allows us, you know, to put this back into our control and frankly try and uh, get some points here. You know, we've missed the last 10, so we need to pick up some points. I think, I think it's my fault, to be honest. Uh, you guys were 5-1, and one, and I had the thought in my head, Oh my gosh, they're they've, they're loaded up. They're going to run roughshod through this regular season and win the Grey Cup on home soil. Yeah. I had the thought, and I apologize. I think no, I just you had more you. than the thought. You yeah. articulated it here. You're like, what if they go sixteen and two and win the Grey Cup? <laughs> so okay, so, we'll blame Blake then. Okay, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll take the blame. I mean. It, that is the part, the strange part, though, Omar, is that everything like this this came out of nowhere. This losing um, because you guys had such a marvelous start, and you seem to be doing everything right from the player personnel standpoint. To even before Nathan Rourke's uh, return, it seemed like you guys were loaded to make this run. Yeah, it's. I think everyone's scratching their head a little bit, and and I I think the good news is if there if there is some out of this. Uh, the team will gel. It's still the same team. You know, the new face, obviously, with Nathan coming in is a bit different. But, you know, really, it's the same guys in there. So we know what we're capable of with that 5-1 and one start and how many points we can score in the defense, uh, you know, uh, being strong. So we know it's in there. Uh, it's a slump, and it's it's not a good one. But I'm glad it's earlier than later in the year. And if, if it was going to happen, I'm not happy about it. But I uh, full confidence in the coaching staff and the players. And Nathan's getting his feet wet again. I don't want him to put too much pressure on himself. I mean, coming back is tough after that much, you know, non-real game time. Um, but yeah, he's sharp. We've got VA there as well. So, we, you know, hey, the quarterback room's in good shape. Um, we just got to get a win here and get this monkey off our back now. Tough question, Amar, but got to ask, are you considering changes? If you were to lose Saturday in your hometown, would you consider changes? We're not even considering anything like that at this point. Um, you know, really, that's uh, a decision that would be done later in the year, if at all. There's no there's no uh, panic button being hit here. We just got to dig ourselves out. We've got a great coaching staff and team. How, um, how involved are you on football ops at the best of times and at the worst of times? And does it change at all? Nope, just a strong fan here. Um, obviously frustrated. And, uh, you know, at the start of the year, just like Blake was saying, hey, you know, we're on fire and now we're – we kind of went into the dumpster for a bit here, but, um, you know, really not involved uh, on, on those decisions. Obviously involved on uh, getting Nathan back. That was certainly brought to my attention. And when that came up, uh, you know, we're very pleased to welcome him home. Everything's been going well on the business side. The attendance has been, I'm guessing, where you wanted. Is, is that fair to say that on the business side, you've been tracking uh, along where you guys dreamed of? Yeah, we're very pleased with attendance and, and the fans showing up and coming back. I think... Uh, you know, each year we've built that up now, starting three years ago, as you mentioned. So we're, we're pleased. And, um, you know, building a strong fan base is the key, so, such that people will come in and fans will come in, even when we're in a slump. You start falling back in love with your team, and it's a good thing, win or lose. So we've got the young fans coming in week after week. Season tickets have picked up tremendously. Uh, it, it, it's a good thing. And, and going to a game now is, you know, it's an event again in Vancouver. And that was a lot from where we came from, guys, you know that. And really where it is now, it's a different vibe. The whole thing feels different. Uh, people know the players. The social media is excellent. We've got great uh, media in you guys. So things are, are, are much better. Again, we just need some wins, but we'll get there. And uh, very excited about this weekend in Victoria. Yeah, and, and because you're averaging 32,000 fans, uh, it allows you to do something like go to a smaller venue. The inaugural Touchdown Pacific Saturday at Victoria's Royal Athletic Park against the Ottawa Red Blacks. We know the game is sold out, uh, Amar, and of course we've got a whole weekend of festivities that you can outline for us. How important is this game to you? How important is this event to you, given it's your hometown? 
Yeah, I think it's great for, for British Columbia. And, you know, also Nathan Work coming home is pretty cool. That story special. I'm going back over to Victoria, uh, where, where I'm from. And so the whole thing is special. Doing this is really for the fan base. And there has been such a strong, loyal fan base on Vancouver Island for decades. To reward them back with a game, obviously, this is not something financially great for our team. This is something to do for the BC Lions, for our fans. And to take that to Victoria, the support of the government, they've been amazing. Um, I can't say enough about uh, our mayor in Victoria. It, it's been just all in from everybody. And there's a big buzz over there. So Saturday afternoon, the weather is going to be great. Uh, the stands are built. It's going to be a lot of fun over there. And uh, I hope to see you guys over there. Have you been wow. getting get a lot of anecdotes about people coming down from Campbell River and, and exotic locales to check this out? Absolutely. And there's this huge demand for tickets and you can't get them. And, you know, there's 14,000 and guys are calling me for VIPs. I've got nothing. It's just, it's tight. And so, uh, you know, it's just a very, uh, you know, it's an oversold event, which is the way you want it. We're throwing a party across the street, a viewing party, so you can at least hang out, hear the noises and, uh, and follow along with the game, beer gardens, all that stuff. We've got bands every night on the Inner Harbor. There's a ton going on. Uh, Randy Ambrosi's here all week. It's cool. Um, and I can't wait till uh, the kickoff on Saturday afternoon. And we've got the Red Blacks again. Let's see if we can pay them back. You know, it's a tough ticket when the owner's like, I can't do nothing for you. Yes. <laughs> I, I got no way into this, no way into this event. Um, the Nathan Rourke situation seemed to accelerate quickly. Can you take it, take us through it from, uh, from your end of it? You know, really, I was brought in just at, at a high level when uh, the opportunities were, you know, starting to appear. Um, you know, Nathan's organization uh, and his, uh, I would say, you know, his team, um, you know, was in discussions with our team. And I, and I think he made it public that if he was to come back, his first choice would be the BC Lions. He, he's a loyal person. He's a good person. And there was a lot of unfinished business, I think, left here when he took that great opportunity down in the U.S. And uh, he's back, um, and he's back home with us. And uh, I think that here, uh, there's a, just a good feeling. He just needs to get a little rust off, and uh, away he goes. And also, it's a different receiving core. It's not everybody the same. And, you know, all of that, it's two years later, and you can't just drop someone in and expect. And I think there was a lot of expectation put on him, and he might put a little on himself. And, uh, you know, my counsel, if he hears this, is just take it easy, get back into the game, and things will work out to stick to the process. Yeah, and, of course, uh his former CFL commish Jeff Giles uh, told us our balls are bigger, right? He's right. got he's got to throw a different football <laughs> now in the Canadian. There is that, league. and uh, you know, coming back in, uh, you know, after all the different schemes he was learning down in the NFL with four clubs, it's a lot. I can't imagine what his brain's going through just to unwind and then start to uh, absorb the CFL game again, which he's a natural at. Uh, Amar, it's a lot of money to pay a CFL player. Like I was sitting there thinking, when's the last time a CFL player made this kind of money? You may have to go all the way back to Rocket Ishmael. And and, and part of it is uh, finance, and you can explain it to us through via the idea of, the, of promotion and, and marketing, that he's not just a football player. Um, uh, boy, been covering the year league for 25 years. I've seen very few individual players be gate attractions. Is Nathan a gate attraction in your view? Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. And, you know, coming back in obviously is different than leaving, uh, you know, uh, a couple of years ago when he was on fire. So once that starts to come back, and which it will, um, he's a gate guy. Like people all over, uh, it was the highest rated, you know, uh, game on TSN the other night by a long shot. Everyone wants to see him play because, you know, there's the Canadian piece to it. Uh, there's the, his whole story about the NFL. This is a franchise quarterback, and we've got two of them. We've got VA, who is just unbelievable. So we've got we've got such a special story going on in BC. We just got to get it into the wind column here yeah. again, but that'll happen. I'm not concerned with the talent we have, but really Nathan is a draw, which is great for not only the BC Lions but frankly the CFL young kids. They just love this guy. You know, it's, it's a, it's, there's just an X factor guys that I can't explain that comes around every once in a while. You want to make sure that, you know, those players are, are not only looked after just because of our selfish interest in trying to win a great cup, but really for the CFL that I'm very committed to. So we wanted to lock him in, lock him down and keep him here at home and, uh, you know, really help our fan base, help the CFL and 
also obviously support him. He's a wonderful, tremendous athlete and just a great person. You probably can you, can you afford pro- to keep both the quarterbacks beyond this year, Amar? Not just um, I don't mean financial wherewithal, but cap wise. Like uh, have you've explored that keeping both quarterbacks that, going forward? Yeah, that that's a you know a, a Rick and Neil decision. I won't uh, you know tell those guys what to do in that room, but certainly they'll they'll sort out stuff at the end of the year on on what uh, evaluations need to be made. Wins probably sell tickets and sell merchandise better than anything else, but that that certain je ne sais quoi of, of Nathan Rourke, I mean, could you have dreamed of that when you acquired the team that you would get that sort of player? Because in the CFL, as much as we love the league, there's not been uh, uh, in recent memory, I think, a lot of guys that just sell the game, exciting players. Um, but I, I don't know that, you know, even a guy like a G. Roy Simon, I, I don't know how much a G. Roy Simon outside of the home market, you know, sold tickets or, or brought eyes in. And I think Nathan Rourke is doing that for the league. It, it's a pretty rare commodity, isn't it? It really is. And, and you know, speaking of that, all of our number 12 jerseys were gone in about five seconds. We couldn't even keep up the T-shirts. You know, we wow. had some left over just cleaned out within minutes. And, you know, that kind of thing does not come along very often. The one thing I think that really uh, comes out of this is it shows you that, you know, you can have some star players come in. When you do have the X factor like Nathan, it tremendously shows off the CFL game and how good it is. And the fans come back in and the new ones come in and it shows how good the game is. And it shows how good it can be in Canada, like the midsection of the country. And it it shows and it helps showcase that. So it really does assist uh, everything, quite frankly, um, for what we're trying to do for the CFL and for the BC Lions. It's too bad Trey Ford's injured in, in Edmonton. It would yeah. be seven miles to see two of the nine Canadian quarter uh, of the nine quarterbacks in in th- any given week starting. I think that day is coming though. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that day is coming uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, Amar Touchdown Atlantic became an annual thing for the Canadian Football League, and I know when we were talking to you and Dwayne Vano, your president, at the beginning of the year, you had mentioned that. Uh, the seeds were already planted. The thoughts about making maybe making Touchdown Pacific an annual thing. Is that what's at stake this weekend? That if you throw a successful event, that we're looking at something that could be a year-over-year thing in Victoria? Well, for, you know, it, it is a CFL-run uh, event. So certainly it's hand-in-hand hand, uh, in partnership with, with the clubs. But really it's a CFL-driven event. And, and we would certainly uh, already, from what, you know, we've seen in the support on the island and, and, you know, everything else, that we would put our hand up immediately. If we could do a multi-year uh, agreement, uh, I'd be all in for that 100%. And Victoria is just such a nice spot for it. Um, and, you know, the Pacific Atlantic thing, it just ties up, uh, or sorry, ties in very nicely. So we'd be very happy to go longer term with this. Well, very much looking forward to this. This is a unique event for the Canadian Football League, the BC Lions, the city of Victoria, and as you say, all those fantastic football fans on Vancouver Island. Wish you the best with it, Amar. Good luck in the game as well, and uh, we'll catch up down the road here. Guys, I really appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Go Lions.